Thank you. Um, over the last couple of months, I've had the privilege of uh, meeting with some of you, not all of you. And uh, the idea today is to bring Patagonia a little bit closer to you. It's a wonderful destination that a lot of people think it's just clothing. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, there's actually not a lot of knowledge about Patagonia. And with that, there's not a lot of knowledge about Chile, which Chile is the gateway to Maybe, oh, it's not linked to my computer. Technical issues. Basically, what I'm going to show you is uh, first some pictures, what you see when you go to Chile. Then I'll talk a little bit about our company and what we can do while the yachts are there and a little bit of the legal, logistical side. And then last, once you've seen things, what else can you do while in Chile? It's gonna be a tough presentation to talk to the one from Costa Rica, but Chile has a lot to offer. Let's see if, are we there yet? Should I try? I look like uh, someone that's gonna blow something up here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in the movies, you know, they have these things. Oh, I think I'm going back to Chile. There we go, no. Let's try it. I always just do it manually. Hit it once, please. Anyways, Chile is a country, I, First of all, who in this room has been to Chile or Patagonia? Please raise your hand. One, two, two. Okay, three. Okay, four. <laughs> so for a lot of you, it's gonna be quite new. I don't know how much you know about Chile, how much uh, you have heard about Chile, but Chile is a very long country. We extend basically from, if you put it on the US, from Miami all the way to Seattle. It wouldn't be wider than Florida, and if we were in Miami, uh, we would be at 20,000 feet high because we have the Andes that separate us from Argentina. So Chile has 18 different climates. The only thing we don't have is humidity. <laughs> and with 18 different climates, you get 18 different types of landscapes. Let's try it now. Am I pressing the wrong button here? No. No. <laughs> You could just press the one button to move it manually. <coughs> one second, please. Okay. Looks like Christmas, huh? <laughs> All those presents for me. <laughs> and language in uh, Chile is Spanish, like most of South America, with the exception of Brazil and the three Guyanas, everything's Spanish, just a little bit different dialects. And English is spoken, understood. Currency, yeah. Currency peso is very uh, stable. Chile has a very stable economy. Chile is a safe country. It's one of the healthiest economies in Chile that has in, in, in South America hasn't had a fiscal deficit for over 30 years. Um, unemployment is low, and uh, we have a good health system. <laughs> is it democracy? Uh, absolutely. We have democracy and uh, elections soon, so we'll see how that turns out. <laughs> um, and, uh, no, I was gonna talk about that, but for, Chile has um, free trade agreements with about 60 countries, so for uh, visitors, Almost anybody, except for some African nations, some Asian nations, they don't need a visa. 90 days you can stay in Chile, and, uh, and for crew, uh, you get a short pass, you don't even need a, even a visa for any kind of nationality. Only if you want to disembark and leave the country, then you have to immigrate. And as far as the, the, the yachts coming into Chile, it's very simple. You have four inspections. Uh, first is um, customs, immigration, um, Navy, 
And then the last one is the SAG, which is the Servicio Agricola Ganadero, which is agriculture. There are certain things that you shouldn't bring. We tell you about them, one of them being honey. Meats, they need to be either eaten or locked away in a freezer because if you bring meats in, every time that you want to take meat out, you're going to have to uh, call someone to come on board and take the lock off. So we do all the provisioning and all that, so we would tell you, you know, how to come to Chile to make it a smooth entrance. The other thing that Chile has uh, territory on three continents, South America, Antarctica, and Easter Island. Easter Island belongs to Eurasia. Or, um, so, so once you enter Chile, you're also free to go to Antarctica. You don't have to do another clearance, okay? Are there charter taxes? Charter taxes? There are no charter taxes. Um, that's one big difference, for example, with Alaska. And uh, in the case uh, of charter, we have one issue that I've told the, 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 the people I've met with, that Chile has one very stupid law and that we are trying to change, and I think we're gonna get a change for the 2017 uh, season. Uh, we started now the season uh, in September. And uh, um, it's that you cannot take passengers in one port in Chile and drop them off in another port in Chile. You would have to drop them off in Argentina, for example. But we can bypass that because they don't care if you're charter or private by saying everybody here is friends of the owner. <laughs> Extended family. We have the Navy. The Navy has the role of the Coast Guard and it's a standard inspection. But if you have the, the papers, if everything's in order, they shouldn't give you much, much trouble. You know, and that's all the stuff that we also take care of, all the pre-clearance, the clearance. And then for Antarctica, of course, you need different permits. Now we're pretty much at the, at the end of the window to be able to get to Antarctica in March. Antarctica, you need about six months for the permit. Can, can uh, foreign charter guests uh, drive the country and go the road there? Yes. They have to come in on the no, no, they can, they can uh, arrive there. They can, they can, Chile has, you, you fly into Santiago, and from there there's uh, two domestic airlines that can take you all over Chile. Let me see if this is still not working. Mm. Are there any piloting requirements? Yes, that was also, you're asking all the questions that I have in the presentation, so that's, that's a good thing. Um, pilotage in Chile is uh, compulsory for uh, foreign vessels over 50 tons. There's two types of pilotage for ports and for uh, navigation in the inland channels. In the inland channels, anything up to 200 uh, GRT, you don't need a pilot. From 200 to 500, you do need a pilot, but through an agent, you can ask for an exemption. You have to file for that exemption now if you want to go, for example, in December of this year to, to give you an idea of the timing. Anything above 500 GRT, you need two pilots. Pilotage in Chile is not expensive compared to other countries. It's mostly, um, it works. Okay, now part B of this is there's supposed to be music to this, but I'll, I'll sing. This is basically what I'm, I'm trying to show you here, and this is like a quick trip to Chile. It's like a four minute of Chile. And uh, basically to get to Patagonia, we always recommend visit also uh, the rest of Chile if you have the time, because it has a lot to offer. Northern Chile is one of the driest deserts in the world. It hasn't rained there for about 800 years. I don't know who's keeping the, 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 the statistics of that. <laughs> Um, that's Valle de la Luna. Some of these pictures I've actually taken myself, so I always tell people there are photographers that make pictures for calendars. I say, you have an easy job. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so then you get to central Chile, which is actually very similar to California or southern France. This is some pictures of Santiago, Valparaíso. Of course, wine. Pacific Islands, this is Easter Island. And along with Easter Island, we also have uh, Robinson Crusoe Island, Isla Juan Fernandez. This is Robinson Crusoe Island. Easter Island is very far away to get to by, by yacht. We always recommend if you, unless you're going east, west or west, east, or coming from Tahiti, 
just go to, to Valparaiso, take a flight to uh, Easter Island and come back. There's no marina there and Anchorage is, is a bay. So, and in three days you've seen Easter Island. This is the south of Chile, which is very pretty. It starts getting colder. Chile has about 4,000 volcanoes. Not, no, no single private one though. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's the uh, lake and volcano district. And then we get to Patagonia, so we divide Patagonia northern, central, and southern. From Puerto Montt to Puerto Williams, it's about 1,000 miles. Navigating through the inland channels, it's about 1,300. We should keep on going. There we go, thank you. So some pictures of northern Patagonia. That's Marina Oxian. We partner with them. You can just, if it should go automatically. Sorry, Bert, somehow the 15 minutes here are gonna be different. <laughs> we'll, we'll adjust. We'll play, play. Yeah, we do things differently in yeah, Chile. We'll, yeah. okay. we'll, we'll, we'll adjust. This is uh, island of Chiloé. Those churches are the southernmost churches that the Spaniards actually built. That they didn't go any further south, it was too cold. And then you start seeing uh, glaciers. To give you an idea, Puerto Montt, which is the northernmost city of what we call northern Patagonia, is the latitude of 41, which is the latitude of New York or Northern California. And, and 100 miles south of that, you already start having the first glaciers. 75% of the South American glaciers are on the Chilean side. There was music to this, it would have been so much better. <laughs> Doing good. Yeah? Doing good. Yeah, I'm not gonna sing. <laughs> That's Rio Baker. And of course you have the Andes, you have snow melt from the Andes, so you have a lot of rivers, carving valleys, every valley is, is different, so there's tons of, of different landscape to see in Chile. This is Puerto Natales, and then we get into Glacier Alley. There's one glacier after the other. And then we get to Southern Patagonia, we have the Magallan Strait. Very safe navigation. I'll show you in a map afterwards a little bit because it's all navigation through fjords, inland. There's almost no going out on the open ocean. These are the Torres del Paine, that's the, supposed to be the seventh wonder of the world. These are all different glaciers, by the way, there's no repeats there. So it's a little, I've never been to Alaska. I'm sure some of you have been to Alaska, so I don't know, I don't know how this compares. But the good thing is that we're opposite seasons. <coughs> Ice is usually not a problem during the, uh, what we recommend is Patagonia, that you go and kind of start going there. We received the first yachts at the end of September now and uh, we uh, uh, recommend Patagonia basically October through April and Antarctica December through February because of weather. So Antarctica is of course very different, and here we get to, to the part that, uh, can you advance it please, so I'll, I'll try. So we are AYSS certified, we're also YATO members as a company, our company is based in Chile. I'm the only person from the company here, and the idea is that I'm a, a liaison between you, the captains, 
and the company in Chile, the idea is to bring people to Chile, get you people to uh, know more about Chile, and that there's a company like us, an agent, that can help from the planning all the way through the yacht clearance, provisioning, bunkering, everything until the yacht departs Chile again. Full babysitting. Uh, our territory is basically Easter Island, Robinson Crusoe, Patagonia, and Antarctica. We also have an office in Lima, Peru, and we have partners in, in, in the other countries. This is very interesting to see because when you think of Patagonia, you think that sounds very far away. First of all, from Miami, it's basically the same time zone, so if you fly, you fly eight and a half hours. From Panama, it's 3,100 miles. So it's, if you take Miami, Panama, you have Galapagos in between, so you can stop there. You can also visit Machu Picchu. This is the same distance than going, as going to Monaco, although Patagonia sounds so far away. And it's much closer than going to Alaska. Interesting. <laughs> it worked. There you go. It worked. Oh, I need to go back. Okay. So in Chile, once you arrive in Chile, you have a lot of ports. Uh, we have certain ports which are marked with an asterisk, which are our prefer preferred ports for entrance and clearance and all that. But basically, you can come into Chile from the south if you're coming from New Zealand or you're coming from South Africa, or you come in from the north through Iquique, and then you have the desert and you have all different ports that you can visit. But you know, for shorter cruises, of course, when it's a 10-day cruise, the, the yacht would have to move there, and then the, the, the uh, guests would come to Puerto Montt, for example. Weather, as I was mentioning, the times to go, Patagonia, Antarctica. I'll, I'll put this presentation on the, on the website so everybody can read it. But weather, of course, you have your, at those latitudes, you're going to have bad weather, but there's a lot of protected anchoring in the, in the, in the fjords. Navigation is very safe, it's very deep, it's the outrun of the Andes, so the channels are very deep. So depth is not a problem, currents are not a problem, kelp can be a little bit of a problem, but that's something the captains need to worry about. <laughs> and anchorages, as I said, there's a lot of anchorages and um, safe anchorages. It can be as smooth as this. And the other question that I always receive, what about piracy? What about safety? Chile is a very safe country. Uh, if you look at some of what Travel and Alicia says, it ranks number seven, number 30 of 160 countries. So Chile in general is a very safe destination to go to. No terrorism, we don't have to worry about, nobody wants to do anything to us. And we don't want to do anything to anybody. Um, this is what I was, this was one of the questions. Uh, so this, this is uh, all the, the entrance, the clearance. Um, 48 hours in advance, we have to let, let them know. This is about the pilotage. Marinas, in, we have basically in Patagonia, you're going to have to be self-sufficient at the moment. Uh, we have the biggest marina is the Oxian Marina. We have Legend there. We have one in Puerto Chacabuco, which is central. And then in Puerto Williams, which is the southernmost city of the world. Puerto Williams and Ushuaia are basically across from each other on the Beagle Channel. So you can, when you go to Cape Horn or you go to Antarctica, you can uh, go either to Ushuaia or you can go to, to Puerto Williams. Uh, Marine Auction was actually featured in the current issue of Showboats. And um, I've already talked about that. So this is what I wanted to show you a little bit, that all of the navigation is basically done inland in northern Patagonia. The only, if you go from northern to central Patagonia, which would start here, that's the only time that you have to go out to the ocean and cross the Golfo de Penas. And then you get to southern Patagonia and you see everything is just inland all the way until you get to, to uh, Cape, Cape Horn. Puerto Williams is here, Ushuaia is there. This is a sample 10-day itinerary with all the anchorages. That's all that we, we help prepare, central and southern Patagonia. These are all the things that you can do. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do. And of course, there's Antarctica and South Georgia. Now, a lot of people ask about South Georgia. Is it worthwhile going there? The one, there's a safety issue with, with South Georgia. So there's no air, airport, airfield, airstrip there. And it's 1,000 miles off the, the, the Argentinian coast. 
So unless you're going to South, to South Africa, we recommend that you visit Antarctica. Antarctica is only 530 miles south. So you wait for the weather window and in two days, the vessel is in Antarctica and there's flights from Punta Arenas to Antarctica. So the, the passengers can transfer or they can go along on the vessel. And the reasons um, to go to Chile, we've already covered some of them. Opposite seasons, no tax for charters. Um, a very easy entrance, not, no, uh, many, not many legal visa requirements. Um, uh, and foreign vessels pay basically the same taxes, as a private vessel pays the same tax as, as a charter vessel, which is just the VAT, VAT, which is 19%. 19, but everybody has to pay that. And the prices are always including that. And there's a lot of uh, um, uh, airline, airplane connections. I'm not going to tell you about us, but basically I'm, I'm here, I'm the one in the middle, and then we have Tomas Miranda, some of you have met him as well. He's a captain and he's in Chile and Ricardo is our operations manager. He's, they're, they are always on the ground when we have vessels, they're there. Tomas is just coming for the Fort Lauderdale boat show, but then he's leaving again because we have a couple of vessels coming. These are all the services we can provide, so basically everything and anything, as long as it's legal. That we do put in the contract. <laughs> We've had some, some funky uh, requests from some Russian customers. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, we've, Patagonia, we're receiving a lot of good press, so it's very exciting to see this happening. I think the other interesting statistic is that 75% of all new yachts that are being built are the Explorer type. So destinations like this is really something, this is not the place where you wanna go shopping, and this is nature. This is going back to nature. So, and it's really not that far away. On the presentation that I'll put, you can click on any of these pictures and it'll take you to a video of that area of Chile. And I'm not going to go into the rest of the presentation because my time is out, Bert is standing there, which means something. <laughs> and you all want to raffle, so. Yeah.